Final preparations are underway this morning and this afternoon now for what will be an historic weekend at War Memorial Stadium. The Arkansas Razorbacks will take on the UAPB Golden Lions there tomorrow morning. It's the first time the Hogs and the Golden Lions have ever faced off on the football field, and it's the first time the Razorbacks have taken on an in-state opponent in 75 years. Reserve tailgating on the old War Memorial golf course is sold out. However, general admission opens at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, and it's $20 per car. The stadium opens at 930 and kickoff is at 11. Officials at the stadium say that they are really excited to host two U of A system schools, and we can expect special moments throughout the game, especially at halftime. Both bands are going to play separately and then they're also going to come together for a historic joint performance, which everyone is going to want to see. It's going to be electric and exciting and really focus on this in-state school unity that we're focusing on for this historic game. Tickets are still available online and at the box office. The stadium has a clear bag policy in place. They want you to know that. And uh, lots of things to know before you head out to tailgate or go to the game. We have a list of some of that information on the homepage of THV11.com. New at noon, police are working an accident in Little Rock's East Village where a semi truck is stuck under a railroad overpass. Some wild video here. Take a look. It happened this morning on 6th Street. No word on any injuries, what exactly happened or if the overpass is damaged, but we are uh, in contact with the authorities on that. So stay with THV 11 and uh, THV 11.com as we continue to learn more about this developing story. This afternoon, we have more good news to report in our fight against COVID-19. Another day of continued progress in Arkansas. Just 506 new cases were reported on Thursday by the Arkansas Department of Health. That knocked down active cases by 120. Still seven new deaths added to the toll on Thursday. Governor Asa Hutchinson is a close follower of the state's positivity rate. He talks about it often. He noted how it stands at about 7% right now and how far we've come when 16% of tests came back positive back in August. Quite progress there, quite a lot. Federal regulators have now signed off on the use of booster shots for all three COVID vaccines currently in use in the United States. Next up, they'll discuss authorizing the vaccines for kids ages 5 to 11. Deborah Alfaron has more from the White House. The CDC signed off on booster shots for the Moderna and Johnson & Johnson vaccines, making millions more Americans now eligible for increased protections. Boosters are free, no insurance or ID required, and getting a booster is easy and convenient. In fact, boosters are available at over 80,000 locations across the country. Johnson & Johnson recipients 18 and older can get a second dose two months after their first shot. Moderna users who were fully vaccinated six months ago can also get a booster if they're 65 and older or at high risk of infection. And the CDC has now signed off on the mixing and matching of the vaccines. There may be some people who um, might prefer another vaccine over the one that they received and the, the current CDC recommendations now make that possible. FDA regulators will begin discussions next week about authorizing the Pfizer vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11. And President Biden says he expects that approval to come within weeks, not months. Pfizer announced this morning that its COVID-19 vaccine is nearly 91 percent effective at preventing infections in school children. The White House says combating vaccine hesitancy is a key part of their vaccination plan for children. We have seen over time comfort with vaccines um, with more and more rollout. Um, we saw that with adults. We anticipate we will see that increased uptake with children as well. A recent poll shows roughly one third of parents say they will definitely vaccinate their children. About a third want to wait and see with another third resisting it altogether. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. An independent FDA advisory committee is scheduled to start discussing vaccines for kids ages 5 to 11 next Tuesday. The CDC is scheduled to take it up uh, the week after that. That puts the Pfizer vaccine on track for approval sometime in early November. Well, it's not a Jacksonville problem, Little Rock problem, local, it's, it's nationwide. Regardless of who you ask, corner to corner, violent crime is a problem in Arkansas. This week alone, we have seen four separate shootings.
two near schools and the other two in Pine Bluff that left two dead and a dozen more injured. And those are just the ones that we've really reported on. And that's why law enforcement officials met at the Little Rock FBI building on Thursday to find ways to stop this trend. According to the FBI, violent crime is up 25% in Arkansas and it's nearly double the national average. So what's causing this? It could be the pandemic, but many say they don't have a clear enough picture to be sure. One thing that is clear though, it impacts everyone in the state. And clearly it impacts people's ability to go about uh, their daily activities. Uh, it, it, it does cause concern and, and it affects us in the same way. When it comes to fixing this issue, no single solution came from the meetings, but everyone in law enforcement agreed it's going to take Arkansas as a whole to fight to curb violent crime. We work together as a team as a force multiplier because we can't do it alone. And, and then also, you know, prevention and education is huge. Our, our troopers go to a lot of schools and talk to kids and, 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 and talk about uh, drugs and guns and different things like that. So it's, it's a kind of a holistic approach, but, you know, we're all dedicated to serve the citizens. We want to highlight one group already stepping in to help bridge to success in Little Rock creates a safe space to study and play after school and during the summer. And after 10 years, their biggest success story is the kids who graduate as adults giving back to the community. If in fact we don't give back from what we have accomplished or, or received in life, then, then we, we can't help the next person to succeed. If you'd like to learn more about the Bridge to Success, we have a link online at THV11.com. Investigators in New Mexico are looking into a shooting involving actor Alec Baldwin. Sheriffs say one person was killed and another was injured when Baldwin fired a prop gun on a movie set. He has not been charged with the crime. He was questioned after yesterday's shooting and then released. One of the movie's cinematographers died in the incident. The film's director was treated at a hospital for unspecif uh, unspecified injuries. Jonathan Vigliotti is following this story for us from Los Angeles. This is the set of the Western Rust Thursday afternoon. The scene of the incident marked off by police tape. Alec, get alert, it? Alec Baldwin is not only the star, but also the movie's co-producer. That morning, he posted this now deleted Instagram photo of himself in costume with the caption back to in person at the office. Just hours later, he was questioned by sheriffs after shooting a prop gun that injured the film's director, Joel Souza, and killed director of photography, Helena Hutchins. On Tuesday, Hutchins posted this video saying one of the perks of shooting a Western is you get to ride horses on your day off. Sheriffs say she was airlifted to a hospital where she was pronounced dead. Souza was also taken to a hospital. The circumstances of the incident are under investigation. According to movie set gun safety expert Larry Zanoff, a gun loaded with blanks has gunpowder, but should have no projectiles. Still, he says it's potentially dangerous to be within 20 feet of a prop gun when fired. Any of that smoke or powder or that muzzle flash that could affect anyone or anything, Again, we keep a standoff distance of 20 feet in order for there to be no effect on something that's in front of the muzzle. Detectives are now investigating how firing the prop gun resulted in death and injury, and they're continuing to interview witnesses. Meanwhile, production has been halted as the investigation continues. Jonathan Vigliotti, CBS News, Los Angeles. And in the last hour or so, we have received a statement from Alec Baldwin's foundation. In that statement, Baldwin wrote, quote, there are no words to convey my shock and sadness regarding the tragic incident that took the life of Helena Hutchins, a wife, mother, and deeply admired colleague of ours. I'm fully cooperating with the police investigation to address how this tragedy occurred.